Starter Pokemon are Pokemon that you start the game with. These are pretty much always Grass, Fire, and Water type. You know, the classic Rock, Paper, Scissors of type matchups. You pick one, your rival picks the one that has the type advantage, or more recently, disadvantage, and you set off on your journey. New games debut new generations every few years, and alongside that, a new set of starters. Rinse and repeat, people start to notice patterns, come up with theories, perhaps even putting them together from pure coincidence. Then Generation 9 came along and shook the boat forever. And what are these theories, I hear you ask? All of the grass starters are extinct animals, all of the water starters are based on some sort of weapon, and the most well-known and quote-unquote accepted starter theory is that all of the fire starters are based on animals from the Chinese zodiac calendar. However, there is another theory that you might not know, and that's that every one of you is at risk of internet criminals stealing your data for dubious activities. Didn't you know that the VPN type absolutely crushes the malware type in the competitive scene? If blocking malware, stopping intrusive tracking, and avoiding malicious ads are important to you, you can get the type advantage with NordVPN. However, Nord does even more than just protect your data. You know when streaming services just pluck your favorite show out of existence? But then that exact same service still has that exact same show available elsewhere in the world? With Nord, you can connect to servers all over the world, and as a result, take a look at all the good stuff they have access to. More of a gamer than a watcher? Well, it can even be used to provide you a quicker broadband. Wow! You can install Nord in pretty much anything. Your computer, laptop, mobile devices. An egg? If you're out and about a lot, like me, using a lot of public Wi-Fi, you'll always be safe. And it's always on, so you don't have to worry about creepers creeping it up in your mainframe or what. I don't know how hacking works. Go to nordvpn.com forward slash deadbedspread to get a two-year plan with an exclusive deal plus four extra months. Two years plus four extra months? That's like 28 whole months! Plus, it's risk-free with NordVPN's 30-day money-back guarantee. So, you have a whole month to decide if it's for you, with absolutely no risk. Thank you to NordVPN, and make sure to visit nordvpn.com forward slash deadbedspread. My transition skills are unmatched. Now, these starter theories have all been subject to change over time. The original grass starter theory was that they all had to be some sort of reptile until the chessmen came along. And funnily enough, none of them have been reptiles since. And the water starters bounce between the weapon theory or them being non-fully aquatic animals. So like no fish, octopus, seahorse. This one is probably due to terrestrial animals being easier to attribute human qualities to. The starters grow as we trainers do. It's why most of them can stand up and have more personality than other Pokemon. But they all have two feet and two arms. Or four legs. Plus their other bits. It's why, despite Decidueye and Quackwafal both having wings, they still both have hands. Now, I used to be one of those people who was insistent that the starter theories were true. All the way up to Generation 8. Rillaboom wasn't just a punk rock gorilla, but the extinct Gigantopithecus. And it's uh, also based on a caveman using Unga Bunga tools for the first time. In fact, if we look closer at the extinct theory for a second, when Sprigatito was announced, the overall consensus online with the theory believers was that it was going to evolve into a saber-toothed tiger, with absolutely no basis in its design outside of the extinction theory. Then, after the full evolutionary line was revealed, everyone and their mom has been claiming that Meowskarada is an Iberian lynx, which, let me just tell you, is an endangered animal. They are still alive, not extinct. You know what, I can see it now. Droves of Pokemon fanatics roaming the Iberian Peninsula, hunting down every single lynx in order for the extinct starter theory to reign true. If I had to guess why this theory is so prevalent, it seems like it was mostly backed up by the first four starters being dinosaurish. Dinosaurs are obviously extinct. And then again being backed up by Decidueye being a ghost type owl in a Hawaii based region, which the general consensus seems to be that it's based on the extinct stilt owl that inhabited the islands, but like, it's also a stealth archer and an owl. Two silent, ghostly things. Ghost type just makes sense outside of the tie to an extinct creature. And if we're justifying it being extinct by it being ghost type, shouldn't all the grass starters be partially ghost type? This theory was definitely up there with the zodiac theory with being easy to believe, but that's simply because if you just take a step back, Every animal that still exists today had ancient evolutionary relatives that looked very, very similar, yet died off, going extinct. So you could literally say that every animalistic Pokemon is based off of a prehistoric ancestor without there actually being any evidence of it. For example, Charizard is the Chinese flying dragon lizard. Typhlosion is the Repnomamus giganticus, a prehistoric badger. Blaziken, giant moa. Infernape, 
Eosimius. Embor is Intelligent. The Hell Pig? That one fits very well. Delphox is a Dire Wolf, because I think foxes didn't. They used to all be the same thing. Incineroar is a saber toothed tiger. It's a big tiger. It has teeth. Cinderace, Neuralagus. Skeledurge, Titan Ochamsa, an extinct Brazilian crocodile. There are already ties to Brazil with that starter trio in general. Makes sense. How about the water starters? How do they fare? Blastoise could be Carbonamus. For alligator, Caprosuchus. Swampert doesn't really look like an animal, but if we take it as like a land based fish, it could be Tiktalic. The first fish to ever walk onto land. Empoleon could be Kumimanu. Samar could be Siomagle Melaluchur. Why do all these things have big long names? What is Latin? Why don't we just call them Old Otter Boy? Greninja could be Beelzebuffo, the prehistoric frog. Just look at the prongs over its eyes. Primarina could be Acrofoca. Intellion is just some sort of dinosaur. It's already based on movie tropes, and the Dilophosaurus from Jurassic Park already took a lot of liberties. It has frills, it can shoot substances. Intellion has frills, it can shoot from its fingers. I don't know. And then Quackwafal could just be a um, hero. There's, the, the point is, there are so many animals. There are so many extinct animals that any of these starters could be based on. It's not even hard. You just Google like prehistoric duck and you get like 12,000 results, so. See, that wasn't that hard. Now, if we look at the more accepted water theory of non-fully aquatic animals, pretty much every starter Pokemon could be lumped into this, as none of them are fully aquatic animals that live exclusively underwater. Frogs, dinosaurs, lizards, turtles. Now, I'll admit that tortoises can't swim, but if you submerge Torterra in water, it's an island, so. But also, you could argue that it's a tree, and you have mangroves, snakes, rodents, birds, monkeys, tigers, salamanders, badgers, Birds, monkeys, pigs, foxes, tigers, rabbits, crocodiles. <laughs> so yeah, that one isn't as much a solid theory as it just is that putting emotions on a fish is much harder than putting emotions on a humanoid duck. So how about the water type weapon theory? This has always been the weakest of the theories for me personally, and honestly, it only really fits five out of the nine water starters, and those aren't even five starters in a row. Blastoise is cannons, sure. Empoleon is a trident, with its crown. Samurott has physical swords, we'll give it to him. Greninja's base form has nothing visually, but between its signature move and its Ash Greninja form, you could say it's based on Shuriken. And Italian is obviously a sniper, they just couldn't give it an actual gun. So those are the ones that kinda work. What about the other four? For Alligator is Knuckle Dusters? Because it has arm bumps? Literally a technique used to break up negative space without adding too many unnecessary colors by just incorporating interesting shapes. And you said that the crocodile is knuckle dusters. I would maybe believe it if it had dusties on its knuckies. Swampert is war fans? Despite literally, you know, being based off of a creature with fins? <laughs> Natural progression of evolution Pokemon is basically do thing but more and bigger. Mudkip has fin. Marshtomp has fin, Swampert has fins, their fins. Quackwaval is like a chakram, I guess, with its tail, sharp water, the weaponized gay agenda. And Primarina is a mace? Because it either hits people with its tail or because its hips have spikes protruding from it. And if you cut off its upper body and held it by the tail, you could hit people with it or something? Nobody can give me a straight answer on that one. Or get this, it's a bomb because its signature move makes an explosion. It's a Z-move, like every Z-move explodes. Pokemon, as much as we don't want to admit it, are pretty violent creatures. Like the core basis of the game is fighting each other. You could say that any Pokemon is based on a weapon. The fire starters are easily lumped into this category. They're all flamethrowers. Okay, but if we want to be like specific, loads of Eastern cannons have like dragon imagery. Fireworks were weaponized at some point in history. Blaziken has got those metal arms look like gauntlets. Monferno and Infernape both have a tail that could be a whip. Embor has big old tusks. Fennekin's stick you could say is a bow staff. Incineroar has these massive guns. Cinderace could just kick a ball at you. Have you ever gotten hit with a bowling ball? I would class that as assault with a weapon. And what's Skeledurge? The weapon of song. Also, the bird is like literally a drone. It just, Skeledurge gives it coordinates. It takes your position and then bombs you. 
And if all of the fire starters are flamethrowers, all of the grass starters could be biological warfare. One of the things you never see with Bulbasaur in the game, but absolutely see in the anime, is that it has whips. Chikorita's line I was thinking could be like a saw blade with like the petal neck. Then maybe it's like the head is a sword, but the neck is like a circular cross guard. But then I realized Chikorita also has whips. Sceptile has blades. Torterra is just a tank. Superior is also a whip. Chespin could be like a tank or a mace or a grenade. Decidueye is obviously a bow. You thought Rillaboom had drumsticks? Those are batons. And Meowscarada, I mean, that flower looks like a drone. Same deal as Skeledurge. So yeah, in a game where the main gimmick is that things fight each other, I think it's pretty easy to tack on weapons to things where there was no basis to begin with. So that's two down, one to go, leaving us with the Zodiac Theory. The one that has the most believers that all the fire starters are animals from the Chinese Zodiac calendar. Let's go through them. Charmander's lion is the dragon. I always see it as a defense against this theory that people will claim, it's not an eastern dragon, it's a western one, and it's also not dragon type, so it doesn't count. It's still a dragon, guys. It's a big fire-breathing lizard with wings. If it looks like a dragon, and it smells like a dragon, it's a dragon. Cyndaquil's lion is the rat. Cyndaquil is often quoted as being based off an echidna or a shrew, which aren't rodents, but they are kind of rat-shaped. Its Pokedex category is the fire mouse. Mice are just like rats, but small. And interestingly, a defense that's used for a later starter could have been used here, but has never been, as far as I can see. The biggest consensus is that Typhlosion is some sort of badger. Male badgers are called boars, and boars are a type of pig. A pig is one of the animals on the Chinese Zodiac, but everyone and their mom ignored that, because seemingly, they weren't desperate enough. And oh boy, will we get there. Torchic is obviously the rooster, Chimchar is clearly a monkey, and Tepic is undisputably a pig. Fennekin is the dog. Now people act like this one is a massive stretch, like absolutely incomprehensible. Like, oh my God, you're comparing a squid to a duck. Like, they just, they're like, um, foxes and dogs, they, they are completely, you can't compare the two. But foxes are literally part of the dog family. It's not even slightly as much of a stretch as people claim it is. Litton to Incineroar are the tiger, it's a big cat with stripes in it. Scorbunny is obviously a rabbit. So, with those eight, some are obviously stretches and you have to kind of squint, but you know, you could believe it, until... Fue Coco. This guy has caused so much contention that the people who are insistent that it fits the Chinese Zodiac theory can't even agree on which animal it's meant to be. He's a horse. So the Fire Croc Pokemon. There are no crocodiles on the Zodiac calendar, so we gotta make do with what we have. I mean, it must be the ox, right? Because male crocodiles are called bulls? We never use this excuse for Cyndaquil, but I guess you gotta make do when you're out of options, hmm. How about a snake? Well, mm, Fikoko is a crocodile. Crocodiles are reptiles, just like snakes. I mean, the majority of fire starters are mammals, yet those never got mixed up. You never see anybody calling Delphox a monkey. Wait, no, actually, it's actually um, the dragon and Charizard was the snake all along, despite them both having legs. No, no, no. Um, Skeledurge is the rooster because it has a bird and now all of a sudden after nine generations we're allowing more than one starter to use the same zodiac sign. I've heard people say that, mm, no guys, it's actually the Aztec zodiac so crocodiles are allowed despite the fact that the Aztec zodiac doesn't accommodate for earlier fire starters. You also have people claiming that the zodiac theory is still true, they're just taking a break for a generation and we really have to wait until gen 10 to see if the theory is true or not. You know what, if y'all want the zodiac theory, I'll give you the Zodiac Theory. If you want to stretch all the fire starters into this calendar, I'll stretch all the starters into it. So, Bulbasaur's line. People say it's based on a frog. Bullfrog. Bull ox. It's the ox. Chikorita? It's a snake. No, because it's long. Well, it's also a dinosaur. Certain male dinosaurs called bulls, so either or. Sceptile has a dragon type mega evolution. It's in the dragon egg group. It's the dragon. Torterra has a big old nose. I guess it's a pig. It's also based on a dinosaur. Male dinosaurs, bulls, also an ox. Snivy, clearly a snake. Chespin is a rodent, so it must be the rat, right? Rowlet's a bird. Rooster's a bird. There we go. Grookey's the monkey. And Sprigatito is the tiger, because they're both cats. What, I can't lump more than one of them into the same zodiac? 
That's literally the excuse that you guys have been using. Uh, War Turtle is based on the Minigami, so that must be dragon, right? Totodile could be dragon, it could be snake, because they're both reptiles, it could be bull, because it's a crocodile, there's so many options. Uh, Mudkip is obviously the goat, but Axolotl are closely related to tiger salamanders, so maybe that. Piplup is the rooster, because they're birds. Oshawott is an otter, they're kind of dog-like. Male otters are called boars. Froki is a frog, bullfrog, ox. But also ninjas have connotations with dragons, so mmm. Poplio is either a seal or a sea lion, the dog of the sea, the males of which are called bulls. Intellion is very long and lizardy, so it must be a snake. And Quaxley is a bird, so it must be a rooster. So why is any of this important? If somehow you didn't know, I am a fake mod artist. I have been bouncing back and forth between two sets of starters for years now. And honestly, the pressure and gatekeeping, even for myself, with what I was allowed and not allowed to do, was just the worst. The fact that when designing fictional animal friends, you have to adhere to this criteria, and then people are speculating things about your starters that you never had in mind for them. It's like, no, my grass starter based on a guinea pig isn't some sort of prehistoric rodent. My fire starter based on a turtle isn't a dragon or a snake in disguise. My water starter that is able to shoot water just like the rest of them isn't some sort of projectile cannon. Gen 9 has been really great for me in ditching a lot of that stuff because if the Pokemon community and Game Freak are allowed to express their creativity however they want, then the rest of us should be too. Now, of course, if you believe the theories, I'm not saying you're wrong. I used to be in that exact same boat. What I will say going forward though, is don't gatekeep people's creations with these arbitrary rules that have never been confirmed because that isn't fun for anyone. Anyway, yeah, they're just a bunch of cartoon animals. Why are we arguing about it? Thank you for watching. This video has been in the works ever since I saw Skeledurge for the first time, and I had to cope with the fact that he was not indeed a horse. A lot of mind-blowing stuff. Seeing a crocodile just be a crocodile. But anyway, if you enjoyed this video, please feel free to subscribe. I have a Discord in the description. There's links to my Twitter and Instagram. I have a Patreon, if you feel so inclined. There's no pressure there. And yeah, let me know. Was I wrong about the starter theories? Were there things I didn't know about? Are they not starter theories, but starter facts? Who knows? Anyway, with all that said, I've been Dead Bedspread, and all the best.